Hi everybody, it's Dr. Magnifico from Jerry's Vet and Pobbly.com. This is my dog Charleston, who normally is a very, very good dog, except that it is summertime around here now. Last night we went for a little walk and we ended up with a big surprise. He found a skunk. Um, I knew that he had found a skunk because he came running at me full force and then threw himself on the ground and was rubbing his face, like, uh, you know, profusely, trying to get the spray off of his face. It's not an uncommon occurrence, unfortunately, so we've been through this, we've been to this rodeo more than once, so I thought I'd give you a little um, video blog on how to take care of a dog that's been skunked. The first thing to do is to go and get your dog. Now, there's some sort of ground zero effect to your dog being skunked. You almost can't smell it when they're right on top of you. There's some kind of 10 foot zone where it hits you and then you find your dog and it's sort of the dead zone. The problem is at the dead zone, it's getting embedded into your dog's fur and skin. So you really need to do something ASAP. Um, the first thing that I did with him was put him on a leash. I've got to, con you've got to control your dog and you want to minimize the rubbing. Unfortunately, the rubbing causes trauma to the eyes and to the mouth. So if he's rubbing his face in the dirt, I'm worried about the corneas. Yesterday, when he immediately when he got skunked, his eyes were tearing profusely. He had tons of drool um, coming out of his mouth. His lips were bright red. He was foaming. He was nauseous. Um, he could barely open his eyes because they were tearing so much. So the first thing that you want to do is put gloves on because although he smells like a terrible skunk, you don't want to smell like a terrible skunk. The next thing you've got to do is put him on a really short leash so you can maintain control. And then the, the next thing you do is get yourself ready to, to de-skunk. Um, you know, the first thing that I did with him was I turned on a hose on really low and I wanted to flush his eyes and I wanted to kind of clean his mouth a little bit. Now you can't stick the hose in his mouth, of course, and you can't stick the hose directly in his eyes, but I wanted to decontaminate his face. Um, if you've ever been you know, had the misfortune of being sprayed with pepper spray, that stuff will burn on your mucous membrane, so your eyes and your mouth, and it's really, really very caustic. So the first thing I wanna do with him was try to get some of the stuff off of his mouth and his eyes. Um, you have to be really careful. When you're, you know, when you're using a hose, hose you want it on really low. Um, I pointed his nose down, so I put my hand on his face, and I was just kind of flushing his eyes. It would be no different than if you got something in your eyes. And then with his mouth, um, pointing his nose down, I was just kind of using Using the hose on the side of his mouth. He, of course, did not have the best time last night. Come here, sit. Good boy. So, so keep a leash on and keep him on a tight leash, but you've got to start decontaminating. The next thing you do is make up the solution to get the spray, to get the skunks off. It's hydrogen peroxide. So I used about a half a bottle of hydrogen peroxide. Um, this is dishwashing soap. It really doesn't matter which kind. I gave about four to five pumps of that and then about a quarter of a cup, so almost a third of a box of the baking soda. I put it in my bucket. Um, it's more, it's not gonna be really watery. It's really gonna look like more kind of like a, a mixture of a like a thick paste um, and then I put a washcloth in there and you have to remember that with peroxide you don't want to add too much water to peroxide because you will just get water so the idea is to keep this you know a solution without adding too much water so what I did was put it in the bucket um, used a washcloth and I wiped him down now of course you have to be really careful of the eyes Charlie sit sit so the washcloth that was dipped in the solution, I just wiped on him. So I can't wipe, you can't put it in his mouth, you can't put it in his nose, and you certainly don't want to put it in his eyes, but he got a direct hit in the center of his face, so I took the washcloth and I just wiped it down, wiped down everything around his face, ears, neck, you have to do neck. I'm holding his mouth closed. If you've got a dog that's especially scared, you're gonna need a muzzle, but I held his mouth closed and then I used the washcloth and solution to wipe him down. I did that at least three times, so back in the bucket, wipe him down. You can't add water or you'll dilute your peroxide and turn that into water. Um, you know, if you have a big dog, you may need to do that batch twice, but it's just wiping down with the washcloth um, and then going back to the solution and wiping him down. It probably took 20 to 30 minutes to wipe him down. I wiped down every square inch of him excluding his nose, his mouth, his eyes, and then going in the ears. After that, I took the hose again on low. <laughs> That's my cat, Ren Ren. I took the hose again on 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 um on low, 
kept his nose up this time and then washed him down. So I washed it all off. Um, when it comes to eyes and nose and ears, you really have to be very careful and avoid it. So we washed him down really very thoroughly. He was still drooling. He was still had a, a lot of foam in his mouth. His eyes were still burning him. Um, but we did a good, a good wash down with solution, a good wash down with the water. And then we went for a very long walk. The idea of going for a long walk after is that he can shake himself dry. If you let your dog go after you've washed them, they're just going to roll and roll and roll. And you really have to be careful of trauma to the eyes, the mouth, and the nose. Um, and they're going to get filthy. And the whole idea is to try to get your dog clean. So we went for a very long walk to help air dry him. You know, he shook off multiple times. And then we took our towels and, and wiped him down. So we tried to get him as dry as possible. Then we did sort of the sniff test, so seeing if he still smelled terrible. The, I should have mentioned early on, the first thing that you don't want to do is let your, your pet in the house because your house will become, you know, a, a seeded with the skunk spray and you won't be able to get it out of there. So we did everything outside and we stayed outside. The last thing and sort of my, my secret weapon is I use um, the ear cleaner that we have at the clinic. This ear cleaner. It cleans, dries, acidifies, deodorizes, and it has a really nice smell. So I took that and I impregnated um, a washcloth. So I just dipped, you know, squirted the solution onto this, and then I did a final wipe down. The advantage of this is it really does help neutralize that odor. So I did another wipe down with him all over his face, his front legs, his abdomen, everything that had gotten in the direct kill zone. Um, and then, you know, with that, I let that air dry. You have to be careful with that, that you don't get in the eyes. It certainly is not meant to be in the eyes, but it really does help neutralize odors very well. Um, and then let that air dry for a little while and then see how bearable he is. He was bearable enough last night that we could have him back in the house. There have been some cases where we have to set up a cage, um, you know, in one of the one of the extremities of the house. So either down in the basement or we have a, an enclosed garage. So we would put him in there just so we could get through the night. Um, but the most important thing is getting him detoxed ASAP so that he's not living with it and rubbing his eyes. He actually slept really comfortably last night and he did fine. Um, last thing is I took his collar and his leash off and those soaked overnight. You can put it in just a warm soapy water solution. Vinegar is another really good thing to try. If you don't have baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, you can do really dilute vinegar and that works well. Um, but make sure immediately you wipe your dog down and get as much of that skunk spray off as possible. So this is Charlie this morning. He's looking pretty good. I'm not really sure he's learned his lesson. We can only hope. Um, but if you have a problem or you need anything, you can find me anytime at Jared'sville Vet or Pobbly.com. Pobbly is free for anyone to use um, to ask questions and we'll be happy to help you. Have a good summer, everyone, and wish Charlie luck. Take care. Bye.